Did you ever stay on the 13th floor of a hotel? No, of course not. Because the number 13 is such a, a terrible omen that hotels, they never have a 13th floor. Here on the nation's most dangerous automotive show, though, we are not so lucky. We have somehow managed to crash into our 13th season simply because avoiding it was impossible. So, for obvious reasons, I'm a little nervous. This year, we will be teaching and testing the nation's lousiest motorists. And once again, for the 13th time, I will be naming Canada's worst I will be naming Canada's worst driver. For this, the 13th season of Canada's Worst Driver. Keep going. Keep going. It's really close. I can no, see it's really Cam, close. It's not. We received over 500 nominations for our unwanted title. <coughs> and as always, we selected the bottom of the barrel. Oh, uh, am I very far? And that would be these folks. One of these eight people is Canada's worst driver. This year, the nominees for Canada's worst driver will once again be sequestered at the Driver Rehabilitation Centre in Dunville, Ontario. There, they will be put through the paces of our unique educational system. The drivers who manage to learn their lessons will graduate and go home. The drivers who do not graduate will stick around to learn more until one final non-graduate motorist will accurately be named <laughs> Canada's worst driver. Dude, one's still standing. But before you guys can actually begin your education at the rehab center, you're gonna have to drive yourself there. And these envelopes contain directions on how to get there. Look at this guy. This guy was supposed to be here today, but he's at a wedding. But he'll be here tomorrow. Anyways, here's the directions to get to the rehab center. This year's route to rehab involves a highway. I can't do a highway. At all? I've never gone faster than 80. Come with me. Come on. Let's go. You'll go first. What worries you? I don't want to die. 19-year-old Brianna obsesses about dying behind the wheel. You don't want to die. That's where your brain goes. Where does the paranoia come from, do you think? Of the accident. Brianna's grandmother, Baba G, says Brianna changed after she and other teenagers were in a car that crashed. Some girls went to the hospital. Brianna got that paranoia. Is that, is that correct, Brianna? Is it? We got T-boned, and I was on the side that got hit. Um, and one of my best friends was knocked unconscious, and I thought she died. Sorry. Since then, Brianna has refused to drive on the highway. But, you know, we're going to change that, right? Damn straight we are. Get out of here. The change begins now. now. <laughs> Once she leaves this parking lot, Brianna's drive to rehab should take about an hour and a half. Oh, I'm gonna go, oh my God, I'm sorry if I kill yeah. No, 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 no. Brianna needs constant reassurances on the road. Oh no, oh no, oh no, what do I do? Can I go right on a green light? Uh, I don't know how fast I'm supposed to be going. Why is there so many cars? Well, they, I'm not counting. It's a, rhetor it's a rhetorical question. 
When we met Brianna just outside of her hometown. Um, why is there three lanes now? Okay, great. Um, I just ran a red light. Oh my God. She asked a lot of rhetorical questions. Why is that guy in two lanes? Why are you turning in front of me? Why is there a bus here? What if we die? Well, there's a cemetery. We can go in there. Baba! <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the parking lot. Fastest you've ever driven. 200. Reckless Joe will be the next driver to leave. Biggest ticket. Five, six hundred dollars. How many accidents? Not too many. He's a nut crazy driver. Joe's partner in their tile laying business, Tony, speeds to work with him every day. He buries the needle. I'm the craziest driver safely. There's I'm no such thing as crazy everybody. and safe in the same sentence. Bingo. On the road to rehab. Whoa, slow down, man. Joe speeds at every opportunity. Slow down, man. When we met Joe in Maple, Ontario, Oh, here we go. Nice. We learned that he gets a lot of tickets. Wow, look, that's a red light, Joe, man. Tickets that he fights in court. He uses the lawyer so much that some of the times the lawyer says, don't worry, I'll do this one for free. Yeah, that's true. Because he gave him so much money already. Business. Joe's lawless driving. Here we go again is something that concerns his entire family. Yeah, she's scared. She gets scared when I go fast. The next nominee to hit the road will be... Ashley! A terrified driver from Newfoundland. What's the matter? I want to do this. Emotional Ashley has one major goal in rehab. I'd like to learn how to drive without crying. <laughs> Guess who nominated Ashley as Canada's worst driver? You! Me! You! <laughs> Jillian! Canada's worst driver from season 11. How's your driving now? Awesome. Is it really? It really is. You hear that? You hear that? Our system works. I know. You're gonna leave fine. You're gonna get there in tears, but you're gonna leave with a smile. Okay. Whenever you're ready. And, and that means whenever you're ready. It doesn't mean you gotta go now. Take your time, be safe. <laughs> Ashley's biggest fear is driving in an unknown area. I gotta go out there. Okay. Now what do I do? Ashley has this fear. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because she has no knowledge of road rules. Oh my god, what do I do? What do uh, I I don't know what to do. So what do I do? What do I do? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When Ashley took her license test in Newfoundland... Oh my God, the traffic. Oh my sweet baby Jesus. She ran a red light, but the male adjudicator passed her. What do I do? I, I'm serious. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Okay, okay, do. you gotta calm down. Ashley has missed her exit on this roundabout. So... This way? She does a U-turn. I'm in the middle of the road. Oh my God, it's a one-way, it's a one-way, it's a one-way. Oh, oh, oh my God, no, I'm in a one-way. Okay. I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, what do I do, what do I do? What Ashley does is crawl to the side of the road. So. And have a big old cry. I'm an ugly crier. <laughs> This year's slowest driver. If it's an 80 zone, how fast do you go? Usually about 40. Shane says he's overly cautious because, as a 13-year-old pedestrian, he was hit by a car. Went through the windshield, was airlifted to the hospital, almost lost my leg, three and a half years of rehab just to be able to walk again. Shane says he drives slowly now. Because you never know when a kid's going to Come on, nowhere. Shanna 
is Shane's older sister. What are you hoping for him out of rehab? I'm hoping that someone can get him to stop thinking about what happened and start thinking about what is happening. En route to rehab. You do know you don't have to wait for both lanes to be clear, right? Yeah, I know. I'm just being careful. Shane is slow, but not safe. Oh, Right through the red light. When we met Shane, he explained his biggest driving issue. The main problem with me is the concentration and being aware of my surroundings. I have to go on No, up. Shane! You just turned left on a red light. Pretty sure there's one... Oh, crap. You just went through a stop sign. Ah, my life. When we come back... Did that sign just say it's a 40 zone? Hey, you're doing 70. The rest of Canada's worst drivers hit the road to rehab. Oh, my God, do I stop here? At a stop sign, yes. Not my road. Four of Canada's worst drivers. I just wanted to be over. Are on the road to rehab. Yeah, there's no one ever died from doing this. Which means these fine folks are waiting to go. Oh, I'm shaking. Come on, you can do this. I'm going to cry. 27-year-old Melanie has a lot on her plate. Um, I have four kids. I'm a single parent. Um, two with special needs. The first is nonverbal and is in a wheelchair. Um, sorry. <laughs> I also have a son with autism. And talk to me about what that means as a driver. Where do they have to go? What do you have to do? And there's lots, a lot of appointments. I bet. I always, I usually get my father-in-law or my dad or Christina, like whoever I can get to drive me, they drive. You, really? You never drive them to nope. those appointments or nope. to the hospital? No, never. L literally never? Like, never. No. Nope. That's right, she never, ever drives to the hospital? She has never drove to an appointment before. Melanie's best friend, Christina, is just one of her chauffeurs. You drive her then how often? Um, probably three or four times a week. Melanie's worst habit as a driver. No, I can't do this. I can't do this. Oh my God, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. Is saying she can't do something when really she can. I can't do this. We are speeding and I don't know what I'm looking at. When we met Melanie in Oromukto, New Brunswick, Come on. she reluctantly agreed to drive her four children. Me too. Okay, go get in your seats. When Melanie leaves rehab, it's her goal to be able to take her children on the five-hour journey to Halifax for hospital appointments there. Am I crashing a police car? No, I'm not gonna crash into a police car. Melanie didn't crash into anything. In fact, she drove quite safely for almost an hour. Mommy! Yes? You need to start driving your own van and quit relying on other people. Our next Canada's Worst Driver nominee has had his license for eight years and has never been in an accident. What the hell's your problem? Um, a lot lately. Um... This grocery store clerk used to like driving. Then, Adam had an incident. I slipped on ice, I didn't jump the curb, and almost hit a mailbox. What the hell is wrong with this kid? He just got through that one incident there, and he's totally, something snapped, something happened. Pat is Adam's father. He wanted to be a limo driver one time. He wanted to be a car driver instructor one time. There was lots of things he wanted An to do. An instructor? Instructor, yes. <laughs> Have a good, safe run. Thank you. A driving instructor? Yep. A driving instructor would never grip the wheel so tightly his fingers went numb. They're tingly. Well, shake them a bit. Not on the highway. Just one at a time. Play this. Mm. Oh, look at me just doing this. But I'm on the highway. 
That's funny. There you go. At home in Kitchener, Adam took us to the place where his life changed. This was all full of snow. And I was going around that corner there, and I lost control with the ice, and I jumped the curb. Oh, you actually jumped the curb? I jumped the curb, and the snowbank stopped me from hitting oh, the mailbox here. And... Adam's driving incident might have been minor. Oh, my god, my hands. Relax. I can't relax. But the impact of it has been major. It's come to that where I don't go out and socialize because of my fear of driving. Just one more driver will head to rehab today. I've been in 13 car accidents. Most serious? I broke my neck. Julie may have hurt herself, but not her pocketbook. What's your insurance then? I don't know. My hubby pays it. Who buys the vehicles? My dad. Why'd you know? Dominator is Canada's worst driver. Because I don't want her to break my neck too. Julie's friend, Lara, says Julie crashes cars. Because she's impatient. Headed for the highway, Julie passes her turnoff, but. Dude, you just missed it. Oh! That doesn't stop her. You're not backing up, are you? Is there anybody behind me? Oh, uh, don't do it. OK, we're doing it. We're backing up. There we go, OK. At home in Edmonton, Julie has written off four cars. I've been in about 16 accidents. She told me it was 13 accidents. But when you're as distracted as Julie is behind the wheel, counting is something you can become confused by. guy's got to get to rehab too. This guy right here, this guy, the most timid guy you're ever going to meet. And when I say timid, I mean like um, you've seen those people who stop at like a T intersection and wait because turning left kind of freaks him out a little bit. Your man here, well, I'll just show you his bio. I think we're going to be here a while. When we met Travis in Edmonton, he waited at a left turn longer than we've ever seen anyone wait for anything. It's really, really difficult right now. Total elapsed time, four minutes. Are you frustrated? No. Are you nervous? Yeah, just... Are you scared to? Um, Travis's wife, April, is all too familiar with Travis's lack of courage. I'm just trying to figure out when I have the five millisecond window to do it. The guy beside Travis seems to be able to find the time to do it. Totally lapsed time now? Seven minutes. You are the driver. Make an executive decision if you have to. Uh, I can't. Travis got his driver's license only a few weeks ago. I'm not even looking anymore. Oh, I've never left turned on a busy street like this before. Before getting his driver's license, Travis had had his learner's permit for 17 years. <sighs> Keep an eye on the oncoming. That was I've... a missed opportunity. Uh, After a totally lapsed time of 13 minutes, Travis has still not moved. <laughs> When we come back. I'm actually really proud of you. You're doing a good job. Oh, yeah. 
fantastic this is. Canada's worst drivers arrive in rehab. I'm not dangerous. It's a safe danger, if you know what I mean. Hey, all right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Canada's worst drivers are headed to rehab. Joe is speeding, Adam is cramping, and Brianna is being driven by her cameraman. 150 zone, that's my Julie. Oh, good God, oh. off! Check it out. Canada's worst driver, season 13. Who do you think is gonna be the first one here, who? The first to arrive. This is a 50 zone and you're going like 80. is Joe, who sped every single time he could. Go here, here, here. Upon arrival in rehab, drivers must reverse into their parking space. Did I get in? Then they must hand over their driver's license. I don't want to hurt anybody on the road. OK, so you recognize that you're dangerous. Yeah, well, I'm not dangerous, but it's a safe danger, if you know what I mean. It's a safe danger. Yeah. To get their license back and get out of here, drivers will have to graduate in ways that are unique to them. What you have to do to get out of here is A, admit you're dangerous, and B, make an honest effort to change that. Something that I can see and recognize. Right. Right? Ashley is next to arrive. Where do I turn? Here? Do I turn here? Ashley cried 14 separate times during her trip. Oh, Did I hit something? As a drive, how was it? It was probably one of the worst things I've ever done in my life. Come on. What kind of charmed life have you led? It was stressful. Put your license in there. Once I get the license of Ashley, Melanie, Adam, Brianna, and Julie, Shane is the last to arrive. Got a lot of space on my side. The injury you suffered as a pedestrian, was your brain injured at the same time? I have problems concentrating, and I have a really, 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 really bad memory. So I think we've got to look into whether or not you have sustained an injury to your brain, because those things take a long time to fix. It helps me get on with my life, then, yeah. Yeah. Become a better driver, become a better person. No. Well, the lousiest motorists in the entire country have arrived in rehab, except, of course, for Travis. But he will be here tomorrow. And then we will learn which one of these eight people is Canada's worst driver. And so it begins when we come back. That's just a bump, that's okay. Canada's worst drivers run our annual assessment challenge. Here at Canada's Worst Driver, we have received tons and tons of viewer mail over the years begging us to stop using cool, collectible, fancy cars in our automotive challenges. Apparently, uh, vehicle lovers don't like seeing sweet, sweet rides get destroyed by the nation's lousiest motorists. Well, Canada, we hear you. Which is why this season, we'll be teaching the Canada's worst driver nominees solely through the use of remote control toy cars. Should be a pretty interesting twist to this, our unlucky 13th season, and it's also a big fat lie. I'm not proud about it. I didn't want to tell you, but it's my job to tell you now. Cue the orange car. We, uh, we did it again. We, uh, we went out, spent thousands and thousands of dollars of our own money. We don't even have a sponsor for this. I don't understand why, but we bought him a Camaro, a brand new one. It's a 2017. It's got a V8 engine. It's got 455 horsepower. It's got zero scratches on it. Place your bets now. How long do you think that's gonna last? 
All right, get the car. Got zero scratches on it. Place your bets now. How long do you think that's gonna last? All right, get the car out of here. I can't stand it. Get it out of here. What makes me cry? This year's Hero Car has a top speed of over 300 kilometers an hour. But it won't go anywhere near that fast on its first mission, which is our annual assessment challenge, which I shall now demonstrate. Okay. Let us begin. As always, the assessment challenge begins with a simple reversing section, which this season can be done through the use of a backup camera. Never before have I used a backup camera in my entire life. But you know, that's modern day driving. This year's assessment challenge, I'm watching my front end for swing, has the widest backup lane that we've ever created. Next step is getting into the concrete blocks. In this section, drivers must enter in reverse, then leave going forward. Ultimately, it's a test of tight space maneuvering skills and patience. Inch by inch, nothing wrong with inch by inch. Once I'm in, it's just a series of back and forth S-turns until I'm around the corner and can see the exit. Now, I can just, I think, leave. The final part of the assessment challenge is a 50 kilometer an hour slalom around five foam figures. And we're off. Woo giddy up. That's 60. I gotta calm down. Slow down, slow down. There's 50. And I look where I wanna go, which is between the people. I gave it a little punch of gas. I'm going more than 50 for sure. And that's it. Is it tough? No. Will Canada's worst drivers? Pass the assessment challenge? Let's find out. Impatient Julie reverses as though this were a race instead of a skills assessment. In one side, but not the other. In the turnaround corral, Julie is still rushing. Okay, so that didn't work that way, so I gotta be closer to this side. <laughs> oh! oh. As always, we have experts watching every move that Canada's worst drivers make. Sorry. Well, she's going pretty quick. Tim Danter is our head driving instructor. Shamala Kiru is our resident therapist. Philippe Laterno teaches high speed driving maneuvers. And Cam Woolley is our legal expert. How can you hit that? Oh. At the end of each episode, these experts will help me decide who should graduate. At the end of our series, they'll help me decide who is Canada's worst driver. <gasps> that was the impatience coming up. That was. It's time for the slalom. How are you going to do with this? I'm going to do amazing. What's amazing is how unself-aware Julie is. Ah! Oh, I broke it. Julie did not do amazing. There we go. Tore his arm off. Travis has finally arrived in rehab. Thank you for your license, sir. No problem. There is a problem with Travis's lack of decisiveness. Are you timid in all aspects of your life or just driving? I'm just naturally timid. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. There's something wrong with that, though. How long is it gonna take him to get to here. Ah, I keep getting messed up in my head. So that's three minutes, and Travis hasn't moved at all. Oh, I know, I'm not worried. We see this 
every year at the rehab center, somebody with this much space on one side and this much space on, on this side. So, uh, if you recall, it was seven minutes ago that I asked you, how long do you think it'll take Travis to get from here to there? Now, 18 minutes have elapsed. How long will it take this man? Long time, I bet. Almost. Almost? You're almost out. It's happening. It's Total elapsed time. All righty. 22 minutes. Yes. Getting turned around in our concrete corral does happen slightly quicker. Not that bad. Can he do a slalom at 50 kilometers an hour? Let's see. Wow, that's a hiccupy start. Oh, oh jeez. I don't know. It just all of a sudden gets away from me. Travis has no understanding of pedal control. I, it just. Just the turn, just the way the car pulled me, it pushed my foot into the gas. I doubt that's true. When Adam arrived in rehab, he explained his motivation for being here. I need to grow up, and that's why I'm here. You yell it at him. Grow up! <laughs> if Adam learns how to drive with confidence... Look at how much space he has on this side. He can get a better paying job and move out of his parents' house. That's just a bump, that's okay. Oh. On the 50K an hour slalom course. Get up to 50, get up to 50. Adam tops out at 30, three attempts in a row. I'm not going fast no, enough. You're not. So I give him a pep talk and one final chance. I was okay. scared. What's the last thing you're gonna say to yourself before you do this? Man up. Man up. And be I'm gonna man. be a man. Be a man, Adam! I'm a man. Come on. Put be some... a man! Be a man! I'm a man. a man. With hairy balls! What? I don't know. <laughs> High five. All hey, right. Boom. I'm forget that time. <laughs> All right. He's a man, damn it. Here's Adam. Slalom. This time, Adam speeds up to 60. There's 60. OK. So he can just coast through the course at 50. Oh, look at you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did I do it? Did I do it? I don't know if I did it. Adam just needed my encouragement. I really like Andrew. He's 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 great. He's super for this. I want to give him a hug if I weren't so sweaty. When we come back. Why can't I do this? The rest of Canada's worst drivers run the assessments challenge. Canada's worst drivers are having their skills assessed in this season's first challenge. I was, I was too heavy on the gas. And Brianna is up next. What do we call that? Oh, that's my front end swing. And this is it again. Oh my goodness. Yes. In the turnaround section, ah! Brianna either hits a wall or scrapes a wall 20 times. Can she do a slalom at 50? Oh my, oh my god, 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 oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
No, she can't. Oh, my God. Brianna is a straight-A university student. I think it's incredibly ironic that I'm a straight-A student really good at everything and can't drive. I think that's, it's, it's ridiculous. Shane does more damage than anyone in our turnaround corral. My life. I swear to God, I'm not crazy. What the f am I doing wrong here? Well, for one thing, he's driving with two feet. Why? Why can't I do this? Why can't Canada's worst drivers go easier on bumpers? Nope. Two grand for a bumper. Two grand. Can he do our slalom at 50? Let's see. Shane has no concept of how solidly he hit the foam figures. I clipped them, I think. Melanie. Melanie is the worst reverser here because No, 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 no. Christina and others drive Melanie to all four of her children's medical appointments. And give me an understanding of how many appointments you're talking about. Four or five appointments a week she needs to go to. Four or five a week? Yes. And that's been for how many years? Since her first was born, eight. When Melanie can't find a driver for an appointment, she simply cancels. You, she will. She usually cancels at least one appointment a week. It's a heartbreaking story. Yeah. In the turnaround corral, Melanie displays the worst driving so far. Whoa. Oh. Drew, just get out of here. That's not good, that's not good. You okay? This is why I have learned I'm driving my daughter because this is what I can't do. Means I just really can't. Okay. Four kids, two of whom have special needs, and she's too afraid to drive. You're going way too fast. Melanie was looking at the obstacles she was trying to avoid. And is that the right thing to do in that situation, or is that the wrong thing so. to do? To look at, at the object? I think so. No? Joe rushes in the turnaround corral. Joe! What the f I'm trying. <laughs> no, you're not. You're trying to show off. Joe told me he once went 200 kilometers an hour on the highway. How fast is he gonna go on our 50 kilometers an hour course? Joe passes the first foam figure at almost 70, then slows down to 30 and proceeds to lurch his way through the slalom, which apparently excites him. Oh, look at this, he's just showing off. That felt good. Joe clearly doesn't get it. I just Somebody. scraped it. Ashley loves rear-facing cameras. That's right, baby. Look at the confidence. <gasps> I didn't see that. So you always reverse with the camera at home, hey? Absolutely. Sometimes there's a benefit to looking. Oh. It's this really weird belief that technology will save us. As long as I get the car that has the screen, I'll be good. When in fact, to be good, you just need to look. Look, look, look at that. Never mind. So I go. It 
shouldn't be this hard. Turning around in the concrete corral is even harder. <gasps> Did I break it? Surely she sees the last one. What am I stuck on? I'll give you one guess. And I'll give you one guess as to whether or not Ashley is the best of all time on the slalom. Oh my god, oh my god. Or the worst. Ashley is the worst slalomer of all time. Never before in our history has anyone hit all five figures on a slalom course. Did I do any? Oh. When we come back, Canada's worst drivers meet our experts and Tim learns that Adam's dream job is to be... A driver instructor. No. Yeah. Do you own a blue golf shirt? <laughs> no, but I could get one. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it takes. <laughs> Our panel of experts have been watching every bad move made by Canada's worst drivers. Now, it's time for these professionals to meet the atrocious motorists face to face. Starting with Melanie, a single mother of four children who never drives them anywhere. Is this the first time you've been away from your kids for this long? This long, yes, for sure. <laughs> well, we'll take advantage of it because you've got Philippe and Shamala and Tim. They all bring different specialties. I've been on the show 12 years and I've seen the way it works. You've got the best people here. For sure. We will have you driving to that hospital by the time you get home. That's what I want. Yeah, I'm excited to work with you. I really, really respect you taking the step to come here and do this. Shane, who was hit by a car as a child, now drives dangerously slow. Philippe wants him to stop that. Because a lot of time the cautious drivers create worse situation. Shane knows. Two weeks after getting my G2, I completely totaled my first car. I actually had to pay a fine failure to yield. I looked both ways twice, but I pulled out and I must not have seen the oncoming car and they hit me at 60. If they were going any faster than they were, that couple in the car would have been killed. Do you think you're Canada's worst driver? Definitely in the running. Does anyone think they are Canada's worst driver? No. I don't think I am. I, I might be, because as of right now, I don't have the skills to be a good driver. I could be Canada's worst driver. No, I'm definitely, have you seen Adam? I'm confident that I, I won't be Canada's worst driver. I will graduate. Well, that's it for the first episode of Canada's Worst Driver, season 13. As you folks know, traditionally, at the end of the first episode of a brand new season, there is no graduate, and today is no different. At the end of our next episode, one of you people will get your license back, and you will be able to return to public roads. The question, though, isn't who will be the first graduate. The question is, which one of these eight people is Canada's worst driver? On 
the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. We learn whether the nominees know where their wheels are. Oh, bummer. There's a head-to-head -head reverse race challenge. Ooh. Ah. Oh, hey, hello. And then it's look left, look right, look out on our annual shoulder check challenge. Hello. I'm in your blind spot.